Hello everyone, I am Stephanie, an artist living in Vannes, France. In today's video I'll be practicing some forest paintings in watercolor. So I usually focus on the microscopic life, so bugs, mushrooms, moss, all those kind of things I kind of nail. I really love to work on those, so those are fine by me. And that's also what I represent most often in my artwork, because I'm so comfortable with it, but also because I'm so passionate about it. But you know, once in a while a girl's gotta have some change and I want a forest feeling or I just want to add a tree or many trees to my work or maybe have a setting, a landscape setting with trees. I've been really wanting to do that. But the thing is, every time I want to do trees, it goes horribly wrong. I mean, just case in point, this nightmare I did yesterday. I'm not going to go too much into details into that one, but everything is kind of off, especially the proportions. I mean, I started off having the foliage in green, but I didn't like it, so went berserk and covered everything in red and orange, which to be honest is not that bad, that branch, it has something. I think in another setting, in another composition, it might actually work. But yeah, the proportion of the rest is just so wrong, it, it makes me grinch. I'm probably going to have to throw that thing away or cover it in something else, I don't know. So after yesterday's annoying failure, I decided it was really time to practice. I am adding all original photographies I used below in the description box, so if you want to practice as well, you can use them, you can use others as well, but at least you can see what were my references. Keep in mind, these are really practice paintings, as I am simply copying a photography of someone else, so these would not be works that I could sell, nor would I want to sell them, they are not completely my work, I just copy a photo and it's not even my own photo, so yeah, just keep that in mind. I've seen that a lot, people thinking they can use reference pictures and then sell the paintings they did of that reference picture as their own work, but that's not okay. Um, photography is an art skill as well and you can't, you can't do that, it's actually pretty illegal, so yeah, just a thing to keep in mind. So for these mini paintings, I made four, I will be using watercolors and interestingly I recently purchased some handmade watercolors from an Etsy shop that is called Artsy Oubliette. So the three paints I got are very muted and dry paints and <laughs> To be fair, it's kind of everything I struggle to work with. Muted colors are usually not my thing. Um, as you might have realized, I tend to go for very vibrant and bold colors, but more recently I've been wanting to refine my chromatic vocabulary and just, I don't know, do things that have more of an adult feel sometimes, or just to, I feel like very vibrant colors look even best when they're paired with muted colors, so I've been really trying to get better in my coloring practice and colors in general, and so I've been trying intentionally to use a lot more muted colors. I got three paints from Artie Oubliette, um, a beautiful green named In the Woods, fitting, right? A brown called Old Iron and a black called Suit. I will also be using some yellow and ochre that I had myself and a bit of ultramarine in some mixes. But yeah, I really mostly used her paints and um, yeah, it made it so much easier for me. I actually discovered the world of handmade paints a few months ago. I'm not exactly sure how, I don't recall if I saw an Etsy um, article, item, or maybe I saw it on, on Instagram, someone sharing about handmade colors. Maybe it was a YouTube video, honestly I don't know, but I started to look into it and I searched on Etsy and I searched on European shops that would sell handmade watercolors and I found the shop from Arts Oubliette and I was a bit obsessed with her shop for months. So Nina makes the most striking little sets that I find so inspiring just to look at. And I've been really wanting to break a bit free on my mono pigment obsession, but also just try her colors that were just looking so scrumptious and earthy and 
really beautiful and uh, yeah and I've read so many good reviews in a shop that I was like I mean it's just paint you know what can go wrong if I don't like them then I don't like them but yeah I'm so glad I splurged on these three colors as they are everything that I needed for this forest that forest feel that I was looking for now I still need to do a light fastness test though with the earthy pigments I'm not too worried usually earthy pigments are really good in light fastness and I have to trust her but I think she's using uh, good pigments and um, yeah she seems like a good person <laughs> but yeah still even though I, I feel she's um, she's doing a great job and her colors are nice and I've actually she sent me a few more colors to test and they are all beautiful and um, yeah but every time you buy new colors I feel like a light fastness test is just a good practice to do and since we're talking about these paints so the three colors I picked so especially the black and the brown the old iron that super dry so the black is suit and I suspect some charcoal is mixed in so it lays on top of the paper a bit it's beautiful to work with because it granulates uh, in a lovely fashion and it's just I don't know the way it works with water and the way it flows onto the paper is, is just mesmerizing and um, yeah you kind of feel like they're just right in the forest it's there's something really orga organic about those paints which I really love however it also means that the paint tends to stay on top of the paper a bit so I did end up spraying some fixative on top to just make sure it stays in place I still would highly recommend these paints just because that earthiness really it gave me the woodland feeling I was so desperate for but again fixative will be needed so a thing to keep in mind now to find the pictures I am working on I used my absolute favorite website Pinterest right who doesn't use and love Pinterest because it's just so easy to find beautiful pictures on there so it's my go-to place to go I was looking for pictures that had a mood of a forest but I really wanted one picture without a path and I wanted the forest to look normal if that makes sense so nothing too crazy magical looking with roots going all over the place so something really normal I wanted realism I picked those four again you can check them in the description box if you're curious to see the original pictures and yeah I'm glad I picked those I also picked the picture of a tree because I, I was interested in seeing so it's, a oak, it's an oak tree and I was interested in seeing how to draw and paint the branches so as usual I started with an ink drawing because I just love using dip pen and ink I just love using dip pen and ink it gives the painting a structure something about an illustration style that I quite like I actually love forest and walking in forests but where I live there's not much forests nearby we're near the ocean so we have a very different type of landscape here which is beautiful don't get me wrong it's it's gorgeous the ocean is beautiful but it's not a forest <laughs> so yeah I kind of miss forest to be fair where I live also when looking at pictures of forest and trying to assess what gave that forest feel I realized it was the great amount of trunks that are very close to each other so yeah incidentally this means I have to compose the idea of yesterday with the road signs differently so the idea was to have road signs in a road but you know overgrown kind of post-apocalyptic style which I love <laughs> but it, it didn't quite work out well and I wanted some trees but I didn't know how and well it was a mess and today while painting all these lush forests I actually think I have an idea on exactly how I'm going to compose that road signs that post-apocalyptic road sign painting so that's another great thing that can happen when you work on reference pictures it, it kind of enables your brain to think and ponder about everything else that is going on in your artwork because it's practice and so it's not that difficult you're not creating an anything you're just focused on recreating on copying something so your brain has the time to reflect on what you're doing and uh, actually every time you're stuck on an artwork your sketchbook is really your best ally 
Usually, if you are honest with yourself, you know what is not working in your artwork. Maybe the color scheme you chose is giving you headaches, or maybe you can't quite figure out the perspective, or one or several objects of your composition is just looking off. Well, in my case, it was all of three. <laughs> yeah, I nailed it yesterday. <laughs> yesterday was a bad day in terms of art. Yeah, I mean, I've always struggled with greens, so that didn't work out. I messed up the perspective, because why not? And um, I lack mental references for trees, so yeah. Three difficulties in one painting, so it could only go wrong. Anyway, so when you're stuck, going back to easy tasks like copying a picture of a forest helps you to figure out exactly what you did wrong and how to improve. Sure, going into a real forest would be best, but we're in lockdown and we're not allowed to go further away from one kilometer from our home. So forest is not an option right now. But yeah, you have the internet, so it's fine, I guess. Another thing that is great about sketchbooks is that you can allow yourself to work faster and with no expectations, with a loose style that might not even completely be yours and your usual more refined works. By the way, about that expectation, I recently saw a YouTube video of an artist saying that to overcome his perfectionism, he lowered his expectations down to 70%. I don't quite recall who it was, but if I find the video again, I'm going to link it down below. As in 70%, can I do this artwork 70% good? So leaving 30% of like, Neh, not great, not perfect, but 70% is good enough basically. And that actually got me thinking because I have zero expectations when I start. I even expect to fail sometimes. When I start a new idea or artwork, I often think, okay then, time to trash that lovely drawing with a color scheme you're not sure about. And I kind of laugh, but it's true. I really have zero expectation when I start something new and I've kind of expect that it's going to be a struggle and that it's going to be difficult and that it might not work out. But at least I can start. So I feel like if you have difficulty starting, the key is to play down the importance of what you're doing. It's nothing too serious, it's nothing sacred. It's just a sheet of paper or some clay or I don't know, yarn or whatever you're doing. If you fail, nobody's going to die and you always learn something new along the way. So you always win something. A failure is always kind of a, a, a win, you know. I actually rarely see the trashed artworks as failure. It's just like, oh well, it didn't work out and then I move on. And to be fair, and I can never say this enough, but the, the more artworks, the more paintings, sculptures, or whatever thing you create you do, the better you become. So it is through consistent practice that you can really get better. So whenever you realize you're stuck in your own brain, just snap out of it and start. Nothing bad is going to happen, I promise. Worst case scenario, that paper will be recycled into something else. And I'm sure you know that, but once you actually start to sketch, paint or doodle, it's such a nice feeling. I mean, sure, there will be times where you feel like saving the, the work you started, but even in that, there's pleasure to be found if you are really intentional about it. In any case, I had so much fun today doing these forests and trees, and I had been missing working with watercolors in a simple way. I'm also super proud of myself, as the greens actually look nice. <laughs> Which is a first, but it's probably thanks to Nina's pain, so I mean, I can't quite take all the credit for it. I will still need to practice foliage and leaves in general, but one thing at a time. There's no rush, and I'm having so many ongoing sculptures and artworks right now that watercolor is a bit my holiday from the rest. So all these paintings took 2 hours 30 of footage, so it's about 40 minutes each not counting the drying time, so basically you have to count about one hour for each painting. Thinking of it like that, it makes me ponder about trying that sketchbook practice again. I never really managed to have a daily sketchbook practice and have a, a well, more practical approach to sketchbooks. As I said before, it's my place to work out my struggles on paper. 
or also to prepare an artwork I have in mind. If I want to do something specific and I know nothing about that, then the sketchbook obviously comes in mind and that's where I will practice and find references so I can work out and figure out how to draw or sculpt something. So yeah, that makes sense. I use sketchbooks really in that sense as a working tool. But sometimes um, I do try to do that sketchbook, that daily sketchbook practice and I simply make very simple paintings or drawings of things that just interest me or that I find beautiful. And I did notice that when I do that, it usually inspires me in my future artworks. So yeah, there's a real bonus to that specific practice. I mean, I haven't quite acknowledged it, otherwise I would be doing it daily, which I am not. And I'm probably a bit lazy doing this daily sketchbook routine, but I have to be honest about it. It's a great way to get into daily work and to find inspiration. So far, I just haven't been quite able to master the motivation to make it a daily habit. But what about you? Do you have a daily sketchbook habit? And how do you stick to it? Do you do it in the mornings, just during breakfast, or rather in the evening to unwind from your day? I'm really curious about that. My only excuse is that I already do art all day, so <laughs> the sketchbook just feels like extra work. But deep down, I know that this specific practice unlocks my brain and opens up possibilities because I don't really think too much about that when I'm working on it. I see a pretty picture, I do it, I copy it, and that might inspire me to do something else. Honestly, now I almost convinced myself of how great of an idea that would be to do that daily sketchbook again. So you know what? Starting from tomorrow, I'm going to try to stick to a daily sketchbook practice until next week. So mark my word, I will do that and I will try to record it, though I might not because that's, that's more work. and. <laughs> We don't want to add extra steps to a daily routine that you're trying to stick to. So we'll see about the video making. But yeah, I will do that. And yeah, I, I will see how I feel about keeping this up. And if I like it or not. Feel free to join me. I really hope this motivates you to get your sketchbook out and just draw, doodle, paint or, you know, make a mess out of it. Who cares? I promise it will make you so much more happier. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment, share, and maybe subscribe. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!